interesting. Well, I love linen and flax. And um, this could be my bed when I get, get up in the morning and I see flax everywhere in all directions. And so it has been for uh, the last two years. In the picture, it feels like flax is everywhere, but there, in fact, there is no commercial flax production for textiles in Sweden today. It is grow grown mostly for the oil. The flax on the picture is growing at a museum in Kungsbacka. It is small amounts of flax grown by local museums or local associations today. And that is, uh, that is uh, nice, but it could be more. Due to the pandemic and the war, it's more and more important to be self-sufficient in several ways, and flax is one of them. One square meter of linen of the flax doesn't make a shirt, but it's a way to learn about how the textiles that we are wearing is produced. It all started in Skada. Me and my colleagues was, a, was at a study visit in Västergötlands museum in Skada. Ethnologist and folklife researcher Inge Vidja has began, uh, gave a lecture about uh, storytelling. And uh, she, and she began to talk about her own childhood. She was often with her grandmother and grandfather, and she often asked many questions. Among the other things, how do you make a yarn for, for a towel? Inger's grandmother said that it, that it was made of flax and that Inger would learn. They started with arranging a place in the garden where they, they did a flax, they, they sewn flax. Uh, Inge then told the story about the whole process of harvesting, preparation, spinning and weaving, weaving and she was able to show us uh, the towel that she had saved until this day. This was magic, a magic story, and when we left my colleague said this is a perfect project for us, let's do it. So that was the idea of one square meter of flax and how it was born. We started planning through maybe, we started planning and thought that maybe 50 people would be interested. We produced a graphic material and bought flax seeds for the project. The idea was that every participant would grow their own flax at home, alone but together. It was all planned before the pandemic, but then it felt that it was meant to be because there was one of the few projects that actually went uh, all the way through. The, through the, the pandemic. Uh, and it could uh, carry on as, as we planned from the beginning. We looked up the associations around Västergötta land that work with flax and asked them if they wanted to be a part of the project and they'd love to. Uh, we advertised the project on social medias and invited everyone to participate. There was much greater interest in this um, than we could ever have imagined. In 2020, uh, approximately 700 private individuals or association participated in project. We thought it would be 50. During the, during the year, uh, digital newsletters were sent out to all participants. Anyone who was interested, even those who were not offici officially part of the project had the opportunity to join the Facebook group, One Square Meter of Flex. There, everyone could ask questions, find other growers nearby, and look for information. During the autumn, meetings were to be held, but due to the pandemic, many occasions were cancelled. It was sad, of course, but uh, also necessary. In the evaluation and in the Facebook group, many people wrote that it was a shame that they couldn't participate because they lived outside Västra Götaland, and also wrote when we grow flax next year. So what could we do? We had to, to continue the project and make it national. Uh, last year, we formed a national group together with the Swedish Handicraft Federation. There were different regional and local organizers. In some regions, it was handicraft advisors such as myself who worked in the project. In other places, it was local associations. Uh, 
By being flexible and allowing different org organizers, it also became possible for everyone in Sweden to grow flax. The newsletter were updated to fit throughout the country. During the autumn, about 20 meetings were held in our region. We met a total of 400 people in Västergötaland and prepared the flax that they had grown. Many participants were eager to continue growing in the coming year, and the project was allowed to continue. This year, together with other Nordic countries, we don't know yet how many people there is going to be involved, but in Västergötaland, there is a fewer than before. We are entering a new phase and taking advantage of our previous work. During this year, we will promote different information films and digital seminars, and uh, seminars on the different parts of the process that is difficult for the, uh, the participants. Uh, it uh, became uh, obvious that threatening is a big question that is uh, causing many problems and questions. That's one minute, uh, yeah. Maria. Thank you. What's yeah. that? One minute, one minute left. And what have we learned? The amount of interest in people is much greater than you can ever imagine, as I told you before. Some parts are difficult to convey in text and digital meetings. It's important to meet uh, and work together to build knowledge and confidence. It's so fun to work with different associations, but there are a lot to keep track of. In this, it is easy to become unclear for the participant who not understand how the project is organized. When a project has more much impact, uh, the knowledge of many increases. There are several stories about people coming to stores and talk that they earlier didn't have a clue about linen, but they always produced. They are fascinated and excited about the material. In the future, we are gonna work with local association, maintain the contact with the project participants, make it possible to prepare flex fibers with the tools, spinning flax and make project, talk about sustainability and uh, make some exhibitions and slide in residence with flex theme. And we love to be a part of this. May I ask a question related to that issue? The communication around those early growing, uh, that early growing phase was mm -hmm. anything that became a common question for you have to, to have to manage? Yes, it was very, very common because uh, uh, when uh, some people in uh, southern Sweden uh, wanted to discuss how to sow and, uh, and prepare the, the soil, uh, the others had snow. Uh, but we, we made it. We made a newsletter and we sent it out to the all all the association that was arranging one square meter of flax, and they were they sent it to, to their project project members. So in uh, Norland they got the mail in uh, in the end of May, but in Skåne they got it in uh, the end of April. Uh, it. It was a bit uh, messy because uh, one, uh, the participant didn't understand why, why did they get the information now and not me? <laughs> but uh, we had to, we were, uh, we were focusing on always answering in the Facebook group and uh, told it's uh, different. You have to, you have to know this is a long country. It doesn't seem like it, it's not uh, the same all over Sweden. Well, it's very interesting you mentioned that, the different uh, microclimates, if you like, um, across one region, and we might come on to discuss that further, further in the day. Maria, thank you so much for your presentation.